last week uh, for our instructional video um, in the whiteboard episodes, we talked about filling buckets and how physical attributes like strength, mobility, so on can overflow into each other. And um, part of our job as strength and conditioning coaches is figuring out which one to attack first uh, to set up more dominoes to fall. This week, we're gonna get a little bit more specific with it and talk about specifically for golf. So one of my biggest pet peeves ever um, is, is the how strength is viewed in the world of golf. So we're gonna discuss that for a little bit today uh, and talk about how, like we did last week, strength can overflow into a few different areas. So today you get the uh, unique privilege of seeing my incredible artistic ability. These things underneath each one is a bucket. So let's just pretend they're not different sizes for any other reason than I'm not good at drawing. So don't let that mean anything to you. It doesn't mean anything. Um, and we'll talk about filling each one of those buckets up. So if we look um, specifically, we have the same some of the same buckets we did last week. Strength, mobility, stability is a big uh, kind of catch word in the golf world. So I included that one and then power and speed. Again, for golf specifically, we're talking about basically how fast you can swing a club for power and speed. Um, for the more of the, like the golf game buckets, we have distance, driving accuracy, irons, short game, chipping, um, that sort of thing, and putting. Uh, so obviously anything we do here, not really going to affect uh, the putting. Uh, I think if anybody in the strength conditioning world says that they can help uh, a golfer make more putts, they're kind of full of crap. So um, that's not really something that's gonna be affected by any of these, so we're just gonna go ahead and leave that out. Short game is very similar. Uh, if you really want to get specific and say that having more strength might be able to help you in the rough or some specific areas, but it's such a fine motor skill, it has a lot more to do with the actual motion and the actual uh, ability for your wrist, hands, body to do what it needs to do, that I don't think that that's gonna have much effect. Um, that we're not gonna be able to affect short game much at all on our side of things either. It's, it's a very fine motor skill that usually only gets better from the technique or actually practicing your short game. So when we look at these things, we'll start with the physical attributes. Um, we talked last week about strength overflowing into mobility uh, and power and speed. And we're also gonna look at and, and kind of frame this in the context. This is, we're looking more of like golfers that do not have probably like corn ferry tour status or, uh, or PGA status. Those guys are usually good enough with whatever they have going on uh, that they, they're either master compensators and they can do a lot of great things with some um, deficiencies and they can just get away with it, uh, or they're, they're just so skilled at the individual motions that some of these things just don't apply to them. Um, so this is a lot of what we see with high school, uh, mini tour, and some of um, the, the tours like Latin America tour players that we see that haven't quite uh, reached that upper echelon level of being uh, the best in the world. So when we um, are looking at these guys, the number one thing that, that we see is a lack of strength. So this bucket's gonna be the lowest, so I'm gonna fill this one in, there's not much there. Um, mobility, usually pretty good. It's something that's focused on, it's the big deal in golf. We wanna be able to um, have that thoracic rotation. We wanna be able to have the hip mobility to, to get in and out of our swing. Um, those sort of things are very, are preached as being very important and, and they are important. So that's usually one that's a little bit higher. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that one up a little bit more. Uh, power and speed, it's becoming more and more of something that is focused on from a young age. Uh, you hear a lot of PGA guys, um, you know, Brooks and Bryson being two that, that have kind of come up recently saying, when you're young, develop speed, worry about the rest later. Uh, so that's something that's that's gone on more and more of now and is talked about more and more now. Uh, TPI does a really good job of getting the message out about, uh, I think talk about like speed windows and age groups and understanding that developing speed early on is a lot easier than waiting till you're, you know, 18 20 to 25 and trying to say, hey, I don't hit the ball very far. I don't do these things in my swing to create speed. I need to change. Uh, that is hard to do later in life. So again, another thing that's becoming more and more important. So that's gonna be something that's more uh, more individualized for the person, how how they grew up, who's teaching them, what the focus is there. So, you know, that's gonna be kind of middle of the road, probably on the lower end still for importance. Uh, with the youth coming up right now, it's becoming more and more important. So that's a really cool change that's happening in the game. Um, stability, I, I don't like this word, uh, especially in the golf, when we're talking about golfers. Uh, stability, 
I think that you can make a really good argument, and I'm not going to get too scientific right now. It's the same thing as strength. I don't know many guys that are like power lifters that I would say, you know what, that guy's not very stable. Um, I think it's a lot like uh, functional fitness or golf specific exercises. It's just kind of these, this word and lingo that these, these people make up and then they hammer it home and they're like, oh, you have to be stable to be a golfer. While that's true, we don't want instability in joints. Uh, most people are hypermobile or golfers are more towards the hypermobile side of things, especially in the high school realm, um, than they are where they have these glaring movement deficiencies uh, that are preventing them from what, what they need to do. So I'm actually just gonna erase that all together. Um, I would love if, if these younger golfers don't worry about stability at all. The re these three things will take care of whatever they think stability is. So let's get rid of that all together. Um, so now that we have the strength and the power and speed, we see all right off the bat, strength is the lowest bucket filled. And as we talked about last week, most of the time, if you're strengthening the right way, your mobility will increase, not decrease. We're not gonna try to make um, you know, people that look more like Hulk Hogan. We want guys that, that can move still, but if we're strengthening in the right way, the mobility should actually increase. Um, and the power and speed, we should also increase our ceiling for that. So by increasing this and filling that in, it's going to go into the mobility and it's gonna go into the power and speed. So that should also increase from that as well. So we're raising our ceiling on both the mobility and the power and speed aspects. Again, we talked about mobility being a combination of strength and flexibility. Um, if we have someone that's too mobile and they don't have that strength, then we end up with someone that looks like, uh, you know, like a Gumby type character or a baby giraffe, uh, where they're just kind of flailing all over the place and they can't control their movements. And obviously that's not something we want either. We want someone that is able to um, you know, if you think more like Tony Finau backswing, really short, uh, but extremely powerful, that's much more beneficial than someone that's all over the place with what they're doing, but they lose their club head and they can't make a consistent move um, throughout rounds or even just sitting there on the range because they don't have the strength to do the same thing over and over again. Um, so that's why that one's so important. Then we look at how the strength flow over into these uh, different attributes in golf. We talked about, again, just a few minutes ago, that nothing we do physically or that we're gonna be able to do in the strength conditioning world, uh, sports performance world, is really gonna help your short game or your putting. Very fine motor skills, um, and it's just, again, I think it's kind of like a, a, someone's being like a used car salesman if they're telling you that they can help you with either that. Uh, I, I don't think it's possible. So when we look at what does strength help with as far as distance, driving accuracy, and irons, it's going to help with all three of them tremendously. So how does that work? Well, obviously if we're stronger, we are able to create more power and speed, that's gonna cause the distance to increase. So we're gonna work on, that's gonna help fill up that bucket. Driving accuracy. We've had guys that come in here, especially high school kids that swing a little faster, maybe 115 to 118 for a high school kid. Um, so that, that pre read they're already upper echelon with the speed and the power. Uh, we've gotten them a little bit stronger and their misses have narrowed down a lot. Um, that should make sense logically because they are able to control the club and the club head a lot better um, with that added strength. Um, when you're, if you're swinging the club head at about, with the driver at about 115, you're creating 60 to 70 uh, pounds of force at impact. So the, between the weight of the head, how fast it's moving, it's about 60 to 70 pounds. That's basically pulling your body into rotation or trying to fly out of your, your arms or out of your hands. So if we can't control that 60 to 70 pounds of force and deliver it to the ball in a consistent motion, then we're gonna get off uh, in some different areas. Um, so whether that's on the downswing or that arm's doing something different or not being able to get into a uh, good externally rotated position with the upper body, not be able to pull properly with the lower body. These sort of things get off throughout the motion if we don't have the strength to repeat them. This is where a lot of people get ma messed up with saying, oh, I need to be more mobile. No, we're trying to control 60, 70 pounds worth of force. Um, being able to just move through a range of motion isn't all that we need. We have to be strong at that range of motion. So that's where the strength really comes into play for that. Um, so we've had guys that, that do swing it pretty fast. They already have the power and speed, so we don't need to increase that as much. But we've gotten them stronger, driving accuracy has gone up. I can control the ball a lot better. I can shape my shots a lot better. Um, so that's gonna fill up as well. 
iron play. Uh, just keep it super simple. If you are able to hit your seven iron 20 yards further, and you get to hit a seven iron instead of a six or a five iron into a particular green, uh, you you're in. You should be increasing your chances to uh, hit a more accurate shirt, shot. So greens regulation or just accuracy with your irons. Um, and then obviously like distance to the pin, you should be able to hit the ball a little bit higher and not have to worry about the ball running off or where however the green sloped and be more aggressive that way as well. So increase with the iron play just from the fact that I can hit a seven iron further now or a nine iron instead of a seven iron, um, those things should increase your iron play as well. So we're filling up all of the boxes or the buckets that we can simply by increasing the strength. Um, so that's where we look at where if we have strength down here and we're increasing that, then that'll equal an increase in distance, driving accuracy, and irons. So if we look at how do we be successful at golf? Obviously, short game is very important, scrambling, super important. Um, but being able to hit the ball further, hit the ball more accurately off the tee, be more accurate with the irons is really going to help you um, lower your score. Does this fix everything? Like the strength, the one, the one size fits all uh, application to any golfer that's having an issue? Absolutely not. Um, there are tons of things that you can do with your swing that, that can help you put you in better positions more often, um, that can make you more efficient with your body movements, and uh, that can help you deliver your club, club face to the ball in a better position um, on each swing. And if you're not doing those things, it doesn't matter how strong you are. So obviously these things work um, you know, in, in correlation with other factors that go along with it. Uh, I made a post last night about how important it is to, to work with a swing coach that's knows what they're doing is helping you move more efficiently, getting fitting for fitted for clubs so that your equipment works with your game as well and your, your specific swing. All these things add up to help you fill all the buckets, but strength can carry a lot of uh, weight, no pun intended, into filling up these other buckets in other areas of your game that we see here um, that any one of those particular things might not be able to do. So. If no one listens to me about anything in life in the strength conditioning field, about anything else I talk about, I really want to get across how important strength is for golfers and how much they can improve. Um, a side note to this too is just with, as far as gaining uh, strength and mass in baseball, the thing that correlates most to both throwing velocity and uh, exit velocity for hitters is, is overall body mass. So the more someone weighs, the better chance they have at throwing harder and hitting the ball faster. Uh, I don't know the specific numbers for golf off the top of my head, never run the correlations, but I, I would bet a lot of money that's extremely similar. And if we're stronger and we're adding some of that hypertrophy into that um, and, and adding lean body mass, I think that's gonna have a huge effect as well um, in understanding that that is how we are going to raise our ceiling. And um, if you are playing consistently out on tour somewhere, week four is a lot easier for you than uh, it would be if you were, have 10 more pounds of lean body mass. Um, and you're able to, to use that throughout uh, the tournaments. The last thing I'll say about any of this is that also with adding the strength and that carrying over to the power and speed and increasing your distance, uh, a, a big knock on that is like, oh, well, if you're training a certain way, even with strength, if there's emphasis on that sort of thing, then it becomes this like long drive swing or, or swinging out of your shoes. And while that may be the case, and, and there may be a time where you do train to really just increase club head speed. Um, the way we look at it, it's the same way we look at doing something like pull downs in baseball, is if I can take someone and, and have them hit a ball into the net and their club head speed goes from, um, their, say they're 115 on the course, and we can over through the course of strength training and trying to get them just to swing faster or working with the coach, we can get them hitting a ball into the net where their club head speed goes up to 128. Um, obviously, the, the percentage at which they need to swing in um, in a tournament goes down. So if I'm trying to swing 115 and my max speed and, and swing into a net and just worry about hitting the ball as hard as I can is 118, then you're working at like 98% uh, of what you're trying, of max effort. 
if you're able to swing at 128 and then you want to sit more 118, 120, then you're much closer to 90%. So the efficiency of the movement becomes uh, more sustainable and uh, you know easier on your body. And again, if you're swinging at 90% as opposed to 98%, it should narrow your misses and help your technique as well. So by raising that ceiling on the end of like being extreme with, with really pushing the limits of how fast you can swing and increasing your strength to do that, um, you should also be able to raise the efficient in-game swing and become more accurate with it. So that's just uh, my soapbox for today on how important strength is for golfers, especially high school guys uh, and girls. If you guys can get in the weight room as, as early as possible for, um, you know, for golf, you're really going to set yourself apart and give yourself a chance to have elite club head speed, um, elite distance, which will help you, as you can see, the guys that they are winning now, the the, the John Roms, the DeChambeaus, the Brooks Koepka, the Justin Thomases, the Roy McIlroys, all those guys have incredible club head speed, um, and a lot of it has to do with what they're doing in the weight room coupled with their technique. So getting in the weight room early, getting that strength, uh, don't be afraid to do it. It's not something that should be taboo anymore. It should be something that is highly encouraged and um, something that is, is preached that will help you get you to the next level. So as always, if you have specific questions, let us know. As you can tell, I'm probably a little, pretty passionate about the subject. We'd love to help you individually. Um, leave a comment. If you have a question, send us an email, send us a DM, whatever it takes. We'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, and if there's something you'd like me to go into more detail about in the future, be happy to do that as well. Just let us know.